Hello everyone. This is image 17 of the Summer Intraoral Radiographic Interpretation Seminar Series. In this video, we'll use a maxillary periapical radiograph to evaluate apical periodontitis. This periapical radiograph shows premolar and endodontically treated second premolar, endodontically treated first molar, and the second molar. Let's start with the premolar. This is the lamina dura. The lamina dura is lost here, and there is a radiolucency. Looking at the floor of the maxillary sinus, the sinus floor appears slightly elevated. On the mesial aspect, we see a radiolucency, and there is no distinct corticated lamina dura. As we go distally, we see probable radiolucency around the apex of the mesiobuccal root of the first molar. The apical pedial space of the palatal root is not very well defined. So that's the floor of the maxillary sinus here. With this tooth, which is not endodontically treated, it seems that the sinus floor is elevated or displaced. This radiograph gives us some information. There are multiple teeth with probable apical periodontitis. For such multiple lesions, it is better that we have a cross-sectional imaging, a CBCT scan, to evaluate the status of the teeth. So this is the CBCT scan of the same patient this blue line indicates the image on this screen. As we recall from the periapical radiograph, there was a periapical radiolucency and we see the same radiolucent defect here. We have some sclerotic bone around. The palatal cortical plate has receded. These are image artifacts arising from the multiple restorations. The sinus floor is thin and let's see if the sinus floor is intact. Here is a suggestion of displacement of the sinus floor. We're coming to the mesial root of the mesiobuccal root of the first molar and here is a radiolucency. So this would also be a residual apical periodontitis. The sinus floor appears intact. There is no thickening of the sinus mucosal lining. As we come to the second molar, and you can appreciate here the elevation of the sinus floor. This is the displacement of the sinus wall. On the periapical radiograph, we did not see this information. Further distally, we see that the buccal cortical plate is disrupted. Here is the disruption of the buccal cortical plate. The sinus floor is thin with probable erosion here, and you can see slight thickening of the mucosal lining. As we go further distally, you can see the sinus mucosal lining is thickened, so we'll call this as mucositis of odontogenic origin. And here we can appreciate the disruption and slight buccal cortical plate expansion. So the apical periodontitis represent three types of pathology. It can be an periapical abscess, a periapical granuloma, or a periapical cyst. Based on radiographic findings, it's not possible to differentiate these three conditions. So the term that you'd like to use is apical periodontitis that covers three different conditions. The radiographic features of apical periodontitis is based on the location. It's because it is an apical periodontitis, most of the time it will be around the periapical region. Unless there is an accessory canal, then the lesion may be on the mesial or distal or buccal or palatal aspect. The border of the lesion is usually poorly defined with zone of transition. The density could be either rarefying or sclerosing, and in our case we saw both the features, a radiolucent area or a sclerotic area. The effects on the neighboring structures would be displacement of neighboring structures. We saw the displacement of the sinus floor. On the mandibular arch, you may see displacement of the inferior alveolar canal. If the lesion is large, it can displace a tooth. So the apical periodontitis may arise from caries or trauma that makes the pulp necrotic. The necrotic pulp will undergo the process of apical periodontitis. This is the inflammatory condition. If the apical periodontitis is not treated, ultimately it can become an osteomyelitis. 
The differential diagnosis of a apical periodontitis includes periapical cement osseous dysplasia and the sclerotic type of apical periodontitis also includes a differential diagnosis of dense bone island. Thank you very much. I'll see you again on a different video.